Uh, speaking of, going back to USFL, talking to Jeff Fisher over the weekend, he brought up the fact that he is thrilled that he doesn't have a single soft tissue injury on his roster for the USFL, that that was a point of emphasis through their practices to get ready for the season, that he was very concerned with that. I would be terrified at that with a 38-man roster. Yes. Oh, and we know how so detail-oriented smooth. Jeff Fisher is, but they were very careful with that, and he was ecstatic that they didn't have one throughout their preparation for the season. There were a couple of, of injuries in the game I was watching yesterday between New Orleans and Philly. New Orleans has pretty good um, defense. Philly's quarterback. Um, Brian Wright, right? No, Brian, not Brian Wright. Yeah, uh, yeah, so he... Brian Scott. Brian Scott. That's your guy. So he, That's my guy. Yep. He had his hand... Um, the Aaron Rodgers of Division they, Three. I, I don't know if it was malicious or not. I My guess is probably. I mean, it's uh, what goes on at the bottom of a pile stays at the bottom of a pile. Uh, I think Brian Maybe Scott's hand, hand... I think his hand stayed there because it was all wrenched and, I mean, it just looked terrible and he was hurting. So the next, the next series, Sloter... The quarterback for New Orleans has his hand hurt, and it's clear eye for an eye. that their defense went after their quarterback's throwing hand the same way. Like, and you know, uh, Slaughter was able to finish the game, but I'm thinking, man, if these guys, if these quarterbacks get hurt, these leagues to me survive off the quarterback play. Like, if you have a quarterback that is uh, durable and has a you know a moxie to them, where they can run an offense, and you, you feel as though they can put up some points. The league overall, the health of the league feels pretty good, right? If, you, if there's a connection to the quarterback that you can market and sell. I was amazed, by the way, but how many teams were just uh, every other series would put in a different Rotate. quarterback. Well, I think that they're rotating quarterback. their quarterback for that reason yeah. in a lot of two-quarterback systems. Interviewed Kyle Sloter on Saturday, and I will forever root for that guy because he was the only one of the interview interviewees that would at least entertain my play call idea. That I want a team. What was your play call? I want a team double to execute four, double the double forward, forward pass. You know, you can pass it forward twice if it's behind the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. But I want to see a team successfully execute the halfback screen, where they let the defensive line through, pop it over the line, and I want the running back to catch it like it's a screen and turn and chuck it deep down the field, behind all behind the line of scrimmage, and. The probability of that working, Larry Fedora completely laughed it off. Why does the second one need to be behind the line of scrimmage? Well, that's the, that's the rule. Because you, you can't have someone running 15 yards down the field. And, yeah, then it's, then no, it's no, rugby. No, I'm saying in your play, get it to the halfback, then let him chuck it down the field. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, but yeah. he's saying well, you don't need a second pass. You could just hand it to him and let him throw it. No, throw it forward no, to no, him I, behind I wanna, the line I'm of scrimmage. I'm trying to utilize. And then let him throw it. That's what he just it. said. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You just described the same yeah. play okay. he just I'm said. Describing well, the play. it's only one pass behind the line of scrimmage. No. The that quarterback throws it to the running back. Okay. The running back catches it and throws it again. <laughs> That's one and two. <laughs> Those are two passes behind the line of scrimmage. Okay. <laughs> what, are you, what are you hearing? What are you, get, take it's me through your handoff. thought process here of what you're thinking. I, 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 thought, I'm, I thought you're saying two passes that are both completed behind the line of scrimmage. No, no, no. The rule is you can throw it twice as long as the forward pass is behind the line of scrimmage. So two forward passes, both behind the line of scrimmage. So, again, throw I'll set it up very well. Thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Correct. So you throw it. It's a dump-off pass. The running back catches it three yards behind the line of scrimmage right. on a typical halfback setup. And, in fact, it happened in the game. And they turned around. There's no one in front of him. He ran, ran for eight yards. Well, instead of doing that, you catch it, and it looks like it's set up. You can have linemen downfield. Right. It's setting up like, like a, a screen, screen, but I've got a guy on the backside running a post coming back towards my running back, so he catches it, turns like he's going to run, and chucks a post. I accept, I accept this play. I want to see that executed and successfully, and none of the coaches. Ex- Kyle Slaughter, the one player we interviewed, said, so I kind of like it. I kind of like the idea. And he's the backup to your favorite quarterback. You're very conflicted. No, no, oh. he's a starter. No, he's, he's a starter. New Orleans. Yeah. Unfortunately okay. for him, though, his coach hated Who it? Chad's idea. Yeah. So yeah. that's out. Fedora's response was, why don't you suit up and be the running back on that play and <laughs> see if you can could. execute it? 